Hello and welcome to another Classic One video. So in this video I actually have been cooperating with a friend of mine, where he has pretty much supplied me with the footage and the knowledge of how he does DME jump runs to acquire some pretty good gold per hour as a priest or as a warrior. Basically this is something you can do as most classes, but it would be best as a tank or a healer, or as a rogue. You also want to have the correct professions when doing this, which is herbalism and mining. If you're two people, aka a tank and a healer, one of you might want to have enchanting as well. Out of Milk runs herbalism and mining, while Salgar runs engineering and enchanting. Herbalism allows you to pick up Dreamfoil, Grum's Blood and Ghost Mushroom. Mining lets you the possible arcane crystals from the end of the dungeon. Engineering has a cool gimmick with one of the bosses. And enchanting boosts your gold per hour through disenchanting blues and greens, turning them into large billion shards, illusion dust, or greater eternal essence. Later on in phase 5, the items in DME are high enough item level to possibly disenchant into Nexus crystals as well. When it comes to the gear required to do this, you can see Milk and Salagar are pretty good geared, but this is absolutely not required, and I will leave a link to a video in the description showing that this is also doable with way less gear as well. Performing the runs smoothly and knowing how to do it is much more valuable and crucial than being well geared. Right off the bat there's two possible herb spawns, a Grum's Blood can spawn next to the Lasher Pack, and a Dream Foil right in front of the rock you jump onto. Milk puts a Renew on Saligar so that he can run ahead and kill one of the patrolling set heroes while out of Milk Herbs. Very important to be aware of the patrolling trends, they hurt, and if you aren't geared they will guarantee a wipe unless you are able to use one of the reset spots. If your DPS dies, make sure that you do not get into combat as a healer, as you can simply resurrect your DPS. There are two possible herb spawns here, a Grum's Blood and a Dream Foil. Here is a possible spawn for a book that can drop a class book or a forest compendium. Two possible herb spawns here, a Grum's Blood and a Dream Foil. It's very important to be aware of the patrols here, as they walk right on top of the herbs. Here Out of Milk is going to pull the Lashers. There is a possible Dream Foil spawn here, and to grab it you have to kill the Lasher packs. Be very aware when pulling, as they do chain the patrolling trends nearby. When you do pull, also make sure they run in a straight path towards you as they can pull the Death Lasher to the left. While doing this, Salgar runs off to find the patrolling stealthed set here. As you can see, there is a ghost mushroom spawn here. If you see one on the minimap but it's not there, that means the spawn is up on the second floor, which we'll show later. Out of Milk spots one of the chests that can spawn in the set here packs. However, this one is locked. Nonetheless, we will show how to grab the chest without killing any of the mobs later on. We arrive at our first boss, Hydra spawn. This guy does some knockbacks, so Salgar always tanks him with his back against the wall. This boss has some nasty hits, and we have experience that he can crit up to 2k with a normal attack. He also applies a debuff called Submersion, which reduces your health, therefore it is important for the DPS to kill him before the stacks go up way too high. Out of Milk recommends to always have the DPS above 70% health. At 50% HP, Hydra Spawn spawns two Hydra Lings. These mobs do zero damage, and two to three Holy Novas from out of milk usually kills them. Here, the boys will show how to grab the chest without killing the mobs. The reason they don't kill them is because they do hurt a bit, and they consider them to be a risky kill. Therefore, out of milk pulls the mobs and runs to one of the reset points in the dungeon. While doing this, Salgar takes the chest. However, as the chest is locked, we don't really grab it. Now on our way to the second floor, we need to kill a set here and do some imps. With a priest, it's rather easy, as out of milk pops power infusion, and holy nervous the packs down. Other healers can simply heal the DPS while they solo it down. Do be careful with the imps, as the damage from them are rather spiky, as they all do a fire blast at the same time. On our way to the second floor we have two possible herb spawns, a Grum's Blood right under the Imp Pack, and a Ghost Mushroom to the right before entering the hallway. A stealthed set here patrols this hallway. Now the next two bosses have some nasty shadow spells and curses, therefore out of milk he buffs himself and Salgar with shadow protection. Other classes like Paladins should use their shadow resistance aura here. 
Also, the stealth initiative applies a slowing poison, as shown by Saligar. Gnomes can use Escape Artist to get rid of it. The Ghost Mushroom that we talked about earlier spawns here. A Ghost Mushroom can spawn to the left of this boss area. Lethendris and Pimgib. This boss is really easy, they cast some fireballs and immolates here and there. The healer can dispel these. The one thing you need to look out for is Lethendris Curse of Thorns. It is super important for the DPS to kick slash pummel this spell. Keep healing your DPS, dispel, and priests are able to dispel the enlarged casts on Pimgib. There are a lot of herb spawns on the second floor, just need to be on the lookout for them. In the meantime, Salgar starts killing the satyrs that patrols the pillars. These satyr are clothies, which means they have very low armor. This allows Salgar to easily kill them for the chance of fell cloth and demonic runes. These satyrs do fear anyone around them, except the guy tanking, so be aware of that. Out of Milk counters this by using Fear Ward on himself. Priests are able to dispel the buffs of these satyrs, do so to faster kill these mobs. Now the team goes back to the first floor to clear the remaining packs needed and Sevrim, which is the only hard boss in this instance. This pack is the exact same as the one after Hydro Spawn. Out of Milk uses Power Infusion and Holy Novas them down. Right behind the pillar after this pack, there is a chance for a Ghost Mushroom. There is also a Grom's Blood right under the pack. The boys are heading up to Sevrim now, the third boss of the instance. In the hallway there might be one to two stealthed satyrs patrolling. In the boss area there is a high chance for a ghost mushroom as well. Now about the boss, there are two items that are key to chasing this boss. Saligar puts on a engineering trinket called the Ultra Flash Shadow Reflector. This trinket reflects all of the abilities from Sevrim, as they are all shadow, even his sacrifice. The second item is Barrow Peasant Caller. This trinket spawns three friendly NPCs which can soak Severim's sacrifice ability. Other than that, the healer should always bait the sacrifice and hide behind the pillar. Positioning is key, as you can see from out of Milk's point of view. If you don't have engineering, having the DPS put on Barrow Peasant Caller as well is a decent replacement. Now it's time to head to the last boss. Be careful of patrols and make sure you grab any herb you might have missed due to patrols on the way back. Since Out of Milk is the herbalist, he usually runs ahead, while Salgar speaks to the tree that opens the door to the last boss. Time for the last boss. The reason we call it Jump Runs is this area where you jump on the pillar, and by following the pillar line of sight, you do not aggro the boss. A book is able to spawn to the left of the pillar, Mechanics of this boss aren't hard at all. Make sure you keep your DPS above 70 to 80% health, as the Wither ability can do some damage. Boss can turn itself into a wolf as well, dealing heavy damage rather quickly. His tree form grants him a lot of armor and disarms the main target. He also casts Rejuvenation on himself, which priests are able to dispel. At 50%, the wall will crack and a lot of imps will spawn. His normal form will cast Enervate on the healer, which drains 200 mana per second. It is important to line of sight the spell. It is super important to go into the cave, as the imps have an insane aggro range and will pull all of the trash packs in the boss area. Out of Milk walks in first, pops power infusion, and 2-3 to three holy novas is usually enough to kill them. After that we nuke the boss and pray to our Jesus for an arcane crystal. So there it is, the Dire Mall East Jump Run Guide. This guide was put together by Out of Milk, and if you want to see more dungeon guides like this one, or just walkthroughs of certain dungeons in Classic WoW, you can check out his channel through the link in the description. DME is an absolutely awesome way to make gold as a healer or a tank, and especially if you don't want to pay 50 gold to respec every single time you're going out to farm, this can be very lucrative to just have obtained the gold you need, to buy raiding consumables for the next week. Massive thanks to my patrons for supporting me over there, and massive thanks to you for watching. Hopefully this guide was helpful to some of you, and hopefully it helps you make some gold as well. That's it for now, thank you so much for watching, leave a like, leave a sub, and I'll see you next time.